Hey guys, I wanted to talk about this subject for a little while now. I'm getting to put the video together for you today. I wanted to speak about what is the Swing Traders Toolkit. Now, when I say Swing Trader, I say that because I'm differentiating between a day trader. A day trader is somebody who buys shares of stock and sells them in the same day, sells those same shares in the same day to make a profit. A swing trader, you may buy some shares, you may hold them for a few weeks, you may hold them for a few months or longer term. That's what I consider more of a swing trader. So I wanted to speak about the Swing Traders Toolkit. In other words, what things should a swing trader have? And the first thing that a swing trader should have is a brokerage account. Now, there's lots of videos out there that you can find on brokerage accounts that you can get. You want to get the ones that speak about swing trading and not day trading. But the broker I use is Charles Schwab. I'm not saying it's the best. I'm comfortable. That's what I use. There's also Fidelity out there. I could say there was. TD Ameritrade, but TD Ameritrade was just bought by Charles Schwab. So if you go to TD Ameritrade, you're going to end up with Charles Schwab in any event. When you get your brokerage account, I'm giving you my opinion. In my opinion, I feel when you get your brokerage account, you should have options trading ability and margin. And I'm going to get into those two. So let's start with what is margin. Margin is basically, to put it simply alone, you have a brokerage account. I'm going to use, for example, 5000 You have $5,000 in your brokerage account. <laughs> you, If your brokerage account has margin, you can actually buy up to $10,000 in stocks. Many brokerages will loan you the equivalent of the money that you have in that account to buy other stocks. Now, you're, this isn't money that you could take out of the account, go buy a new TV or buy a car or whatever the case is. This is money in your account specifically for the purpose of buying stocks. So now, when you're buying stocks, only 50% has to be paid from the money in your brokerage account. The balance of those shares can be paid from the margin that they loan you. Now, I know that loans are getting a bad rap these days. I don't like credit personally. I don't like loans. I can't remember. I've stopped using credit cards years ago. But you have to realize when you're, if you're, let's, let's think of real estate, for example. You have landlords all over this country. They buy real estate. And they make money from their real estate 
by renting out the properties that they own to others. They don't buy those houses with their own money. They put up a small down payment and the rest is purchased with a loan. But the money that they make from their investment covers the loan payment and gives them cash flow in their pocket if they're a good landlord, if they know what they're doing. If you're going to get margin to buy stocks, the objective isn't to lose money. It's to make money. You get margin and you buy a stock with some cash and some margin, and the stock starts to drop, you sell it. But if you get cash and some margin and buy a stock, maybe you have a stock which costs you around 10,400 shares. You buy it with 5,000 in cash, 5,000 margin. That stock in a month's time may go up. You may make, say, $1,000 profit on that stock. And the interest that you may end up having to pay on the margin may be $50 or $60. Now, if you bought that same stock with just your cash and not margin, you would have ended up making $500 instead of 1000 So you would have left around $440 on the table. But now you've collected all of the cash and you paid around $50, $60 in margin, in margin interest. So margin is money that's available to you. No credit report involved. Just simply when you fill out the form, to, or when you go through the wizard, whatever they have, to start your investment account, they'll have a question asking you, do you want margin? And you want margin, you say yes. Or if you already have the brokerage account opened, and you want margin, Call their customer support. Ask them where you can apply for margin. They'll tell you where to do it and how to do it. And you apply for margin in your account. Now, the next thing I asked you about, or told you about, options. I said, in my opinion, if I have a brokerage account, which I do, I would have options trading ability in there well i actually have put two videos on this channel one of one of them is called what is a call option the other is what is a put option i would definitely look at those two videos if I was you and get a better understanding of options. But when you open a brokerage account, that's another thing they'll ask you if you want options trading ability, if that brokerage account deals with options. Now, as I mentioned in the videos on options. Buying options can be risky. So when you're applying for a brokerage account and you're asking about options trading ability, they're going to ask you a number of questions to decide whether to give it to you. 
first they're going to ask you how much money you can afford to they, they may ask you how how often you buy options or have bought options they'll ask you how much you can afford to invest in options okay they'll ask you how long you've been trading options and they'll ask you what is your knowledge level of options and based on the answers to those questions that will determine whether they give you the options trading ability or not now options trading ability isn't yes or no it actually comes in different levels and the level i'm talking about there it's going to be four levels that they can grant you and the level i'm talking about is one down from the top the top level is that you can buy and sell calls and puts and you don't have to have the money in the account to cover it the level just below that is where you can buy and sell calls and puts but you have to have the money in the account to cover it that's the one that i would suggest you're getting and when you watch these two videos what is a call option and what is a put option then you'll understand why i feel those should be inside of a trader's toolkit as well the next thing that should be in a trader's toolkit some type of fundamental analysis when you're buying a stock you're not just buying shares you can't just look at it as you're buying shares you're buying shares of a company and what that means is if you're going to buy a company what's the first thing you're going to do you're going to research the company and know that they are fundamentally sound know that you're putting your money into something that's worth you putting your money into well if you're subscribed to my channel you have all of the fundamental analysis and any stock that i mentioned to you guys let's say i i put out weekly um this week's winning stocks the stocks that moved up the last week from their annual low price and you can look into to see if they move up into the next week well any of the stocks that i mentioned there i have the fundamental analysis on it may not be on video yet but it's already put together and if you guys just drop me a comment or send me an email asking me to drop the video analysis I will drop it on the channel quickly for you so that you can decide if that's the stock that you want to buy or invest in. And then, lastly, for the Traders Toolkit, you need some type of candlestick charts. Now, like I said, I put out of this week's winning stocks every week and i show candlesticks like this with the stock i'm talking about you can look at the green candle see how it's moved up or where it's moving up from its 52 week low i also put stars on there which indicate what tier it is all of the stocks on our watch list 
I break down into three tiers. They're all fundamentally sound, but the third tier is the most fundamentally sound. Three stars most fundamentally sound. Two stars a little below that, and one star a little below that. So, if you're subscribed to the channel and you're looking at this week's winning stocks, you'll see what stocks are moving up. You'll already see the candlestick charts. But you should also have your own candlestick chart. So that now, maybe I put this out on Friday or Saturday, you could see what stocks moved up the previous week. But now what you want to see on Monday or Tuesday is, is it going to continue to move up? Because if it moves down, you don't want it. But if it continues to move up, you may want to jump in and buy. That's where you will have to have your own candlestick charts to check it and see if it's continuing to move up. And you can get that from TradingView.com. TradingView.com, they have paid subscriptions as well for those who need more features available. But for basic candlestick charts like I need, you can sign up for a candlestick chart account with TradingView for free. So TradingView.com. And these are just a few things I feel are necessary for a trader, a swing trader, to know about and to have access to. Okay, guys, have a great night, and I will see you in the next video.